for everyone except for you because you're on this. Good morning. Welcome to the Lake County Planning Commission hearing scheduled for August 22nd, 2024. Time now is 9.02. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you. May I, staff, um, may I get verification of legal notice? Yes, Madam Chair, they've all been verified. Thank you so much. And we will look to approve the minutes from July, or excuse me, June 27th, 2024. Okay. We're going to hold that thought. Um, we have been fortunate enough to um, have a new commissioner for District 5. And we will take the time right now to have her sworn in and um, take the podium. So if you would like to stand up and we will go right over here. I believe you raised your right hand and she will take over because she will have you um, do the procedure. Uh, whichever, wherever you'd like to stand, if you want to come over here, they could all see you. Good morning, Maria Valadez. So I'm going to have uh, Sharon raise your right hand and then um, I'm going to have you state your name and we could either do the repeat or if I, we want me to read it, you could just do the I do at the end. I can do the I do at the end. Okay. <laughs> so I, please state your name. I, Sharon Zoller. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. I do. Okay, well, congratulations. <laughs> and, um, if I can have you sign on here. Your oath of office. And I'll get a copy to you guys for your records. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Okay. And thank you, Sharon. Thank you. <coughs> Commissioner Zoller, um, we appreciate your contribution to your community and um, filling the seat. And welcome aboard. And also, um, while I have the floor, I would like to welcome back um, Ruby. She's part of um, our admin, and um, you've been missed, but they have been, you know, everyone's taking care of everything, but it's nice to see you back. So, back. so thank you so much. Okie dokie, um, let's go ahead, um, without further ado, we will go ahead and um, bring up the approval for the minutes from June 27th, 2024, with any corrections or notes to discuss? Don't believe so. If there are no uh, corrections or comments, uh, I'd like to move to approve the minutes from June 27th, 2024. Okay, we have a, a motion. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. At this time, we will open public input. This is an opportunity for anyone wishing to speak or bring anything to our attention that is not on the agenda. Not seeing anyone in chambers. Is there anybody in the Zoom room? No hands in the Zoom room. We will go ahead and close public input and move on to our timed items. Time now is 9.07. We will bring up our first timed item for 9.05. This is a public hearing. 
um, in consideration of proposed major use permit UP 24-14 and CEQA exemption CE 24-15 Morgan Valley Wind Farm LLC location 25650 Morgan Valley Road and 10888 Rocky Creek Road in Lower Lake. Um, this um, public hearing has been canceled to my knowledge. The question before your commission uh, chair is whether or not to um, remove this item from the agenda to actually pull the item. So that would be the motion. Okay. Um, and staff can explain why uh, your commission should not or cannot hear uh, the item today. And then you can deliberate if you see fit and make the motion. There would be a comment period on that issue alone, which would be whether or not this, this item should be uh, removed from the agenda. After the posting of the agenda, it came to the awareness of staff that there were a few details that might not be uh, ready for you yet. Um, both this one and, and that'll be the same reasoning for the, the other one that we pulled or that we're requesting to be pulled from today's agenda. Okay, and then um, to be rescheduled with a date certain or just? Uh, at this point, we'd prefer to just re-notice, so a date and time certain is not necessary. Okay. Yeah, and you, would, you are not being asked to continue the item. You're being asked to just remove it from the agenda. Okay. Madam Chair, I move that item 6A905, um, time for the hearing for this, this item, be canceled. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to cancel or to remove this item. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Our next timed item is for 920. So um, we have 11 minutes until 9.20. So we will bring up that item here shortly. Madam Chair, in the meantime, since we have a, a moment, um, I wanted to introduce the newest member of the County Council's office. This is Jackson. Good morning, Jackson. Hi, so, welcome aboard. So when you, if you come up or um, uh, you may, you may uh, interact with him as far as land use goes. He seems interested in it. So he might be working on some of the things for planning commission and, uh, and staff. Okay. Jackson, do you wanna, um, not to put you on the spot, but you're welcome to approach the podium if you'd like. Tell us about your life. If you have dogs, what'd you have for breakfast? <laughs> Coffee or tea? Oh. oh, it's probably best we don't get you started then. Okay, we won't unleash the beast. Okay, well, welcome aboard. Sam. <laughs> Sam, do you have any um, videos of the lake or some birds you can put up to share on the screen? Good morning. Old Sesame Street. Oh, excellent. Why, thank you.
You've told me before that usually this is a, um, it's how they work. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, there's the music. It's the elevator music. Yeah. <laughs> That's our elevator music. <laughs> Sharon, are you there? <laughs>
Right, <laughs> you get a little plug every, every time you plug them. <clears throat> okay, welcome back. Time now is 9.20. Our next timed item is a public hearing for consideration of a proposed rezone, RZ23-02 General Plan Amendment GPAP 2302 and negative declaration IS23-15 to change the existing zoning de designation from open space O Scenic Combining SC District to Single Family Residential R1 Scenic Combining District SC and General Plan Amendment to change the existing General Plan designation from Public Facilities PF to Low, de low Density Residential LDR. Applicant is Melissa Lim, location 9460 East Highway 20, Glen Haven 95443. APN 035-04119. Good morning, staff. Good morning, Ms. Laura. Chair and commissioners. Um, my name is Laura Hall. I'm senior planner. And can you hear me OK? That's good. Yeah. Um, first, I want to uh, let you know there was a green sheet submitted. And uh, that was comments from a neighbor. And we received that on August 19th. Bring it to PowerPoint. Thank you very much. Today we're going to be reviewing a rezone um, RZ2302 and a general plan amendment GPAP2302 and an initial study 2315. The agenda includes a permit request and description, a site description, project analysis and background, cumulative impacts, and recommendations. The project site is located in Glenhaven, right off of State Highway 20, and it's shown here in the blue highlighted uh, parcel. Surrounding land uses include single family residence, uh, two, I believe, the the north, west, and east. The permit request and description include the applicant would like to rezone the property from uh, open space to single family R1 and uh, also includes a general plan amendment to um, change from public facilities to low density residential LDR. The site was previously used by the um, Clear Lake Oaks Fire Protection District as a fire station to serve the Glenhaven community. The existing um, general plan and zoning maps are shown here highlighted in blue. Um, the zoning is open space as mentioned before and the general plan is uh, public facilities. This is the proposed zoning and general plan map, which would rezone to R1 
with a C with a SC overlay scenic combining and uh, the general plan would be low density residential LDR. There would be no expansion or decrease in the land. The, the parcel is only 4,225 square feet and it's developed with the structure that was the previous fire station. There's some uh, non-native grasses and shrubs a grant deed was um, recorded on February 19, 2020 from the Clear Lake Oaks Fire Department District to the previous owner. The previous owner is not the applicant. The previous owner is owned the property and sold it to the applicant. The property was sold to the applicant in 2021 and a stop work notice was issued May 4th in 2023 by the building department because the applicant was doing some repairs to the property. Project analysis includes the Lake County General Plan, Shoreline Communities Area Plan, and the Lake County Zoning Ordinance. The project is uh, does comply with these following the gold LU1 and policy LU13, policy LU21, and, and that, that includes for um, incompatible, to prevent incompatible uses were, were with, if the rezone and general plan amendment were approved, then it would uh, um, allow for single family residents and surrounding residents are already in that neighborhood. So it would be a compatible use and infrastructure is already there on site. It also complies with uh, um, Chapter four of the housing element, HE5, uh, goal HE5 and policy HE5.1. And it, um, as mentioned, the parcel is only 4,225 feet and the uh, uh, lot width is 50 feet. Under the existing, um, for public facilities under the general plan, the FAR is in between 0.5 and 2. And after calculating the FAR, you can see that it's under that. And the proposed low density LDR uh, requires a 6,000 square feet um, lot. But uh, the lot, since the lot's undersized, it would, uh, the, it's now, it's existing and proposed would both be non-conforming with the Lake County general plan. In other words, even with the zone change, it's going to remain non-conforming. So we looked at the following articles, Article 24, Article 34, Article 10, Article 34, and other um, articles we looked at was Article 41 and 47. And looking at the existing O, we did some of the um, requirements here and as shown it would be cut for the setbacks in the zoning ordinance under the new um, R1 it would meet the setback so it would be less non-conforming but it would still remain non-conforming and um, yeah that's noted at the bottom there uh, we also looked at the shoreline communities area plan And it was it was in compliance with that plan. And for the environmental analysis, CEQA analysis, we did a negative declaration after the initial study analysis. And we found there were no impacts, so no mitigations were needed. And the co commenting period was May 9, 2024 to June 8, 2024. We did receive comments from the building department saying that they would, that the applicant would have to apply for an as built permits and would also be required to install uh, fire sprinklers. We did not receive any comments from the um, affiliated tribe and public comments. We did receive public comments. Most of them were positive, but there was one, um, that uh, mentioned drainage, the retaining wall, temporary roof, uh, limited parking, 
uh, building fire damage, a uh, person living in structure, no, without power, et cetera. Uh, we got two comment letters from this particular person and the third you received on the green sheet that came in August 19th. Most of these things have to do with the property behind. I, I'm not sure if this particular parcel uh, was connected to the parcel behind at some point, but it's not now. Um, some of the things are uh, related to the parcel, a person living in the uh, structure. Um, the applicant was staying in the structure, but she got uh, noticed by the building department that, you know, you can't live in here. It doesn't have electricity and, and that. So, and there, the, the limited parking, it's got adequate parking up front in front of the structure. There's two parking spaces, so I don't know where that comment, uh, if it was related to another area in that place. Recommendations, we recommend that the Planning Commission take the following steps. Adopt the negative declaration IS 2315 with the findings that the project will not result in detrimental impacts to the environment and all impacts will be less than significant without mitigation measures. B, adopt a resolution recommending approval of the General Plan Amendment GPAP 23-02 and rezone RZ 23-02 to the Board of Supervisors. C, recommend approval of the rezone RZ23-02 to the Board of Supervisors based on the findings in the staff report. D, recommend approval to the, of, of the general plan amendment GPAP23-02 to the Board of Supervisors based on the findings in the staff report. And that's the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Did just you, just wanted to add one uh, piece of clarification, Michelle Iris, Principal Planner, since there are uh, quite a few motions up there. Um, in our code, uh, the authority um, is delegated to the Planning Commission for the CEQA document. So Planning Commission is being asked to adopt um, the initial study and negative declaration as well as the resolution. Um, and then the other two uh, motions are a recommendation for the rezone and the general plan uh, to the Board of Supervisors. Just wanted to clarify that. Okay, thank you. Um, and thank you for the presentation. Um, do any of the commissioners have any questions before we open it up for public comment? Um, I have a, a question. Um, so after, um, if we approve um, the motions, uh, would it be to, con to allow the property owner to continue making the construction and renovations of the house? Yes, um, the the applicant got um, a stop work order because the rezone was not, that's one thing I didn't mention, that there was supposed to be a rezone done under a sales agreement, and that never happened under the previous owner. And um, for an, I don't know the situation, but I think that maybe the applicant did not know about the stop work order. So now, in order for her to move forward with improvements, she has to get the rezone done first, and then she can move forward with getting the improvements done, the remaining improvement. Thank you. And the, the stop work order um, that was issued, was it because of building illegally? Yes. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Hess? Was that... I'm just trying to understand Ms. Lim's intentions. Mm -hmm. And you say that there was something in the deed about a rezone for the, that was there for the previous owner. It, it simply never was acted upon. Right. So Ms. Lim was just didn't have access to that information or didn't understand that the rezone was part of the equation? I don't think she did. She just bought the property. And I don't know if there was transparent information provided when she bought the property. Sure. So. My concern um, for doing this would be, um, since she has went ahead and already built, I don't want to just rezone it just to make it easier for her to continue building. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that is my concern. Um, but we will open it up for public comment. Is there anybody in the Zoom room wishing to speak on this item? May I just make one more comment? Please, Manager? Commissioner Hess. Um, is, does the fact that she would have to um, get as-built permits, does that in any way diminish your concern or? Um, not necessarily. I mean, it, I feel like it is, um, 
it is good reasoning to um, to go in, check it, make sure that she's up to code and compliant with what's there. Mm -hmm. And then if this if this zoning change is the next step in order for her to continue on in making it a more livable, up to code, safe, all of those things, um, then then I understand that completely. Yeah. Would it have to be solar ready as well? With like new construction? Would it be what now? Sprinkler ready and solar ready? I don't know about solar, but sprinkler, yes, that's a requirement from the building department. Okay. And is, um, just to kind of uh, clarify what Commissioner has said, we, we just wanted um, clarification on whether it was existing construction or new construction from the ground up. I, it was existing, it was an existing structure that was used as a firehouse and the previous owner did do some remodeling and then he sold it to her and then she continued doing remodeling. Okay. And I think she has finished most, of, it's already been finished most of it. There's just a few things left to do. Okay. Before she gets her uh, clearance to occupy or? Yeah, she has to uh, go see the building department and take care of the as built and then she can occupy. Okay. Um, so I do see a comment um, from uh, uh, Bill Collins. Um, or his, yeah, his comment saying that uh, it would be, that they would have to have automatic sprinklers. Uh, that was in 2023, October 2023. Has that, or do you guys have any idea if that work was done yet? I don't think so. No. It, I would just add that um, the stop work order would, should prevent that, even if uh, he commented on those requirements, it would be if uh, the rezone is approved and she was able to move forward, then that would be required. Gotcha, thank you. Okay, um, Ms. Ruby, is there anybody uh, in the Zoom room with their hand raised just because we have public comment open before I close it? Yes, there is one person. Okay, we are going to um, give you permission to speak. If you could please uh, say your first and last name. Sure, my name is Elizabeth Kanjemi. It says Lisa, but it's E L I S A B E T H Kanjemi. C A N is in Nancy, G E M is in Mary. Um, I own a house, uh, 9425 East Highway 20. Um, I'm familiar with uh, Melissa and I'm also familiar with the property that she purchased. Um, just from my perspective, when she purchased the property, and if you went on Zillow and saw the pictures of the property that she purchased, the person was obviously living in that facility. Um, there was TV, there was a kitchen, there was couches, all that, right? So when uh, Melissa bought the property, I think, you know, in her mind, she was just like, okay, this person lived in it before me. Um, I'm going to do some fixing up that I like, what I want to do, and I'm going to, you know, continue. And so when she was told that she was out of compliance with the zoning and you guys had to stop work order, you know, she complied and she's doing what she can do now to get the zoning uh, rectified so that she can continue living on that property. And I listened to this whole meeting and it seems like, yes, it's residential um, and, and all around her. I don't know why, you know, we couldn't continue with that property being residential and, you know, she's going to improve the quality of the property and get it up to code and have just a nice, you know, place on the highway versus what it was before, which was an abandoned firehouse that was continually deteriorating, right? I mean, I know the person that bought it had done some improvements on it, but there needed to be some, I think, more improvements as well. So I just think, you know, it's a good thing for the community. Um, and I don't know why we wouldn't uh, approve this. That's all. So that's what I think. Um, I don't know if you have any questions for me, but I've been living um, on my property. I've had it for over 10 years. And I've, all I've seen, except for when that one guy purchased the property, you know, a couple of years ago, that firehouse has just been sitting there doing nothing for years and years. So, okay. It could be an asset to the community. So. Well, um, we appreciate you taking the time to give us your, um, your comment today. Sure. No problem. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. Is there any other um, hands raised in the Zoom room? Okay, no hands in the Zoom room um, and nobody in chambers. 
we will go ahead and close public comment and bring it back to the commission for discussion or motion. Madam Chair, I'm prepared to proceed. Okay, Commissioner Hess. Um, I move that the Planning Commission adopt negative declaration IS 23-15 for Melissa Lim for a property located at 9460 East Highway 20 Glen Haven, APN 035-04119 based on the findings in the staff report dated August 22nd, 2024. Aye, second. Motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I further move that the Planning Commission recommend to the Board of Supervisors approval that the Board of Supervisors approve the rezone RZ 23-02 applied for by Melissa Lim to change the zoning designation from open space, scenic combining to single family residential R1 scenic combining SC on the property located at 9460 East Highway 20, Glen Haven, APN 035-041-19, subject to the findings and based on the conditions listed in the staff report dated August 22, 2024. Aye, second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I move that the Planning Commission recommend that the Board of Supervisors approve the general plan amendment applied for by Melissa Lim to change the general plan designation from Public Facilities PF to Low Density Residential LDR on property located at 9460 East Highway 20, Glen Haven, APN 03504119, subject to the change, subject to the findings and based on the conditions in the staff report dated August 22nd, 2024. I second. All in motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Motions carry. Uh, please note that the applicant or any interested person is reminded that the zoning. Yes. Apologies for interrupting. Okay. Uh, realize in their staff report under motions, we didn't have uh, the motion for the planning commission to adopt the resolution. Okay. Um, so we need one more motion. Okay. Uh, we are um, needing a motion to uh, approve the, one more time. It's adopt the resolution in attachment. Bear with me for a second. In attachment six. Is that a roll call vote? Is that a roll call vote? For a resolution? Mm -hmm. Yes. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> so Danae would poll each of us. Okay. So I still need a motion to um, to adopt the resolution in attachment six, unless I can formally make the motion myself. Am I allowed to adopt to make the motion myself? To adopt the resolution. Uh, no, the chair, in order to make a, uh, you, you may, but you would have to move from the chair. So you'd have to give the gavel to someone else temporarily while you make the motion and then, but you can second from the chair. Thank you for that clarification. So um, as of yet, we are still waiting on a motion for the uh, adoption of the resolution at this time. Uh, I move to adopt the resolution on uh, to adopt the sorry to adopt the resolution recommending approval of general plan amendment GPAP 23-02 and rezone RZ 23-02 to the board of supervisors. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you for that resolution. I will go ahead and read the note. Uh, please note that any applicant, uh, Madam Chair, yes, Nicole, if, yes. <laughs> if that was, if that was the uh, vote for the resolution, then um, it would need to be roll call. Oh, thank you for that. Staff or uh, Danae, may you do roll call? Thank you. Aye. 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 Thank you for the roll call vote. Does that um, complete? that before I read the note. Yes. I just want to make sure you. we got all of our bases covered. We got our rezone, our neg declaration, and our GPAP. Okay. 
please note that the applicant or any interested person is reminded that the zoning ordinance provides 37 calendar day appeal period. If there is a disagreement on the planning commission, or excuse me, with the planning commission, an appeal to the board of supervisors may be filed. The appropriate forms and applicable fee must be submitted prior to 5 p.m. on or before the seventh calendar day following the commission's final determination. All right. Time now is 9.45. We will take up our next item, 6C, public hearing in consideration of a proposed proposed major use permit, UP22-15, and mitigated negative declaration, IS22-14, for commercial cannabis at 17425, 17445, 17475, Oregon Valley Road, and 10800, 10850, 11450, 11474, 11480, 11486, 11490 Spruce Grove Road, Lower Lake has been canceled. Uh, the, or sorry, um, applicant Joe Michaeli Grow LLC and um, Nicholas Tax. Um, staff, um, this is the other item that you had mentioned that was going to be canceled. After the posting of the agenda, it came to the awareness of staff that there are a few details that still need to be verified prior to presenting the staff report to you. Thank you for that clarification. Um, we need a motion to pull it from the agenda is my understanding. I move to remove item or cancel uh, item 6. 6C from the um, agenda. Okay, I will second. All in favor for canceling this item? Aye. 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 All opposed? Items canceled. Okay, moving on. In three minutes, we will take up our 950 item. This one's on even when it's off.
All right, welcome back. Time now is 9.51. We will bring up our timed item for 9.50. Public hearing on consideration of proposed revocation of major use permit UP 20-03, including cultivation of up to 131,180 square feet of outdoor canopy, three A-type, three medium state licenses, and one type 13 distributor transport only self-distribution license due to high severity violations. Permit T, Alvarez Farms, LLC, location 12990 Spruce Grove Road, Lower Lake, APN 012-067-40. Um, good morning, staff. Thank you, Maria Turner, Community Development Director. Uh, we'll just take a moment to pop up our PowerPoint presentation. I have some slides for you. All right. Excuse me if I'm switching glasses in between this whole presentation because I wear mm -hmm. granny glasses now and I can see medium or far depending on which glasses. <laughs> so. Probably dating myself, but that effect reminds me of Tron, the movie that came out when I was a kid. It definitely has a <laughs> 80s effect, yeah. <laughs> was it? It was fun. <laughs> I don't think that's the right one. Nope. Well, as they're pulling that up, I can just go ahead and mention a few items that came to you last minute that we uh, received after the posting of the agenda. One was a letter from an attorney. I think it's the representative for the permittee. Um, we received that this morning. Or no, I think we received it last night. Uh, so that was distributed to the commission, as well as a um, uh, documentation that we have from previous, the previous site visit, uh, photos, and a proof of service by, uh, by mail of the notice of violation. I will cover those in my slides as we move forward with the presentation, which is here. Awesome. Thank you very much. So what you have before you today is a recommendation of a revocation of major use permit 20-03. Uh, permittee is Alvarez Family Farms, LLC, and the basis for the recommendation is for high severity violations that were found to be taking place on site. Next slide, please. You see a picture on the left side is uh, kind of their site plan. I want to just draw attention to the ones that are above the road. On the left-hand side, you'll see two separated cultivation sites. In between those two sites is a water course. And so the site plan that was approved by the Planning Commission approved the separated cultivation sites because they, they did meet the setbacks from the water course. This will be covered, um, a violation that we noticed will be covered in an uh, upcoming slide, but I just wanted you to focus on that. Then the picture on the right is zoomed out so you can see um, where Spruce Grove Road is located in relation to uh, 53 and 29 in Lower Lake. Next slide, please. Oh, wait, can you go back? Sorry. There's more. This uh, major use permit was approved on April 22nd, 2021 for three acres of outdoor cultivation, a 500 square foot indoor, and a distributor for transportation for self license. We do see in our records, the application included an application for an early activation permit. 
However, we are unable to find any records of an issuance of an early activation uh, of use permit. We can't find the placards. We can't find, um, we, we have no record of this actually, of the EA being approved. Property owners. I apologize, what, what year was that? 2020. They applied in 2020 and it was approved in April 22nd, 2021. But typically, uh, as the commission knows, an early activation of use is issued prior to consideration of the full use permit. Property owners are Ignacio and Idolina Alvarez. Freddy Alvarez is listed in the Secretary of State website as CEO, Secretary, CFO, and Director of Alvarez Family Farms, LLC. Next slide, please. An annual compliance monitoring site visit took place in 2022. Mr. Alvarez attended the inspection. Active cultivation was observed. The state license was requested and there was no state license um, submitted to the staff when they visited. State law as well as local county code requires dual licensing. That is um, obtaining both a local county permit and a state license prior to cultivation. Staff also noticed that the cultivation taking place had no metric tags. This is also a requirement from state and is also indicative of having no uh, state license. Next slide, please. When we returned, we took a look at the uh, Cannabis Unified License Search tool online and were not able to find a license. So we dove a little deeper and reached out to staff at the state and they issued three declarations from the Department of Cannabis Control, the custodian of records, stating that there was no license issued to Alvarez Family Farms or any license issued to Freddie Alvarez or this location. These declarations are included as attachment two in your staff report in your, yeah. Next slide, please. The next year, we did another annual compliance monitoring site visit. This was on August 2nd, 2023. This time, planning staff was accompanied by code enforcement staff and sheriff's office staff. They met with Freddie Alvarez from Alvarez Family Farms, as well as Ronnie Fa, who, who declared himself to be farm manager. Next slide, please. Again, state license information was requested, but this time, instead of saying, uh, they, they, they told staff that they could not provide the documentation, but they did give them a license number, LCA 23-00001115 to staff as their state license. And where would they have found that number? Um, that would have been a number issued by the state when a state license was approved. It should be unique to the license. That's what I was asking about. Mm -hmm. So staff did come back and use that, uh, that website, the Cannabis Uni Unified License Search, and found no results for that state license. At the site visit, Mr. Alvarez was informed that cultivation without a state license is a high severity violation. And code enforcement staff would now take lead on the site monitoring visit. A notice of violation was issued that same day, August 2nd, 2024, included as attachment four in your staff report. And this is where the photos uh, that we distributed during the last break are, are of our code enforcement officer discussing the notice of violation with the farm manager. You can see the, the color of the page and the title notice of violation on the top. Additionally, distributed during this last break was a proof of service by mail of a notice of violation, as well as a notice of nuisance in order to abate. This was sent via certified mail on August 7th, 2023 to the property owners, Mr. and Mrs. Alvarez. Next slide, please. Numerous violations. Uh, were noted. I'm not going to read the whole list because I cover most of them in the future slides, but just wanted to highlight a couple of them. Unpermitted hoop houses, unpermitted electrical systems, 
Various water tanks were overflowing on site with large quantities of water spilling onto the ground. Severe erosion due to unpermitted grading, including trenching. Next slide, please. Oh, and one other thing I missed, you don't have to flip back, but also noted was a lack of a pesticide applicator license and operator identification. This is also required by the state, but they, um, they delegate to our county agricultural commissioner to, to issue those. No such license or identification had been issued. This slide shows active cultivation in process. Next slide, please. This slide on the left-hand side, you'll see the pipe underneath the ground or the piping um, for water diversion from the site. And on the right-hand side, you can see that same pipe, how that water is channeled downhill toward the pond. No grading permits had been issued for any land work. Also, um, this is a good time to mention if you can picture that slide of their approved site plan, the two that were separated by the water course, when staff was on site, they did note that the water course had been covered over and the two separated can um, canopy sites had merged. There was cultivation all the way across. This was referred to the state water boards for investigation and enforcement. Next slide, please. This is a picture of the structures that were um, erected without permits, uh, as well as electrical, uh, also no permits issued. Next slide, please. Cultivation taking place within a structure. There was a large amount of a mold-like substance on the walls. And again, electrical that was not permitted installed. Next slide, please. More cultivation. Next slide, please. There were four cargo containers approved in the use permit for the purpose of storage of items. These show you four cargo containers. Um, a future slide will show what is behind the camera, which are additional cargo containers. Next slide, please. Storage of items was noted in some of the cargo containers, though you'll note uh, the left side looks like normal storage of boxes, but as we start moving toward the right, you'll see processing or manufacturing equipment also stored. Additionally, just to reiterate, this permit is for outdoor cultivation only. No manufacturing was, was applied for or permitted. And then on the right-hand side, you start seeing um, cargo containers looking more like workstations. Next slide, please. So in the cargo containers that were viewed in that previous slide, there is a substance that looked like some sort of insulation sprayed on all the walls. And equipment for manufacturing uh, cannabis um, products are, were viewed in these cargo containers as well as water station um, and power hookups. Next slide, please. Additionally, tools and supplies for manufacturing cannabis um, were found, as well as the note keeping or bookkeeping um, describing the manufactured products and a refrigerator of manufactured cannabis products. Next slide, please. On the left is that zoom out photo showing uh, the additional cargo containers not approved. On the right hand side is a picture of the rear of those four um, improved cargo containers showing the extensive electrical power um, that was installed for these. Uh, again, no permits. And on the far side you can see the water tower, no permits. Next slide, please. There was significant unpermitted grading um, to support these cargo containers, no permits. Next slide, please. 28 pigs were found on site, uh, both in cages and out of cages. There was no food or water available that could be found by our uh, staff. We did refer this to Animal Care and Control for their immediate action, which was taken. Next slide, please. As we went up the hill to take a look at the approved four water container, four containers for water, the water tanks, um, the hill provided a vantage to an adjacent property, which showed another structure under construction. This adjacent parcel is also owned by Mr. and Mrs. Alvarez. 
Um, you know, the photo that's missing here, and I'm sorry, I, I'm showing you 25 slides. I was thinking that was kind of pushing it, so I didn't include the photos of the water tanks but uh, at the top of the hill. But the when, report. oh, good, so you can see the water just right. running free out of the top. Awesome. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. Staff did go and visit that structure under construction on the adjacent parcel and observed significant materials for future cannabis cultivation. Next slide, please. High severity violations. Chapter 13, section 49 states that failure to obtain the necessary permits to engage in cannabis cultivation legally is a fraud against the county. High severity violations are defined as violations of considerable environmental impact at the first time it occurs and which impact will be greatly acerbated by its continuing to occur. Just to repeat and refresh, a notice of violation was issued on site on August 2nd, 2023 and sent by certified mail on August 7th, 2023. There is an appeal procedure for notices of violation for high severity violations. It is covered in the uh, Lake County Municipal Code, Chapter 13, which is where most of our nuisance abatement stuff is housed, uh, specifically Section 56.3. To appeal a high severity violation, the responsible party must requ request an appeal not less than 10 days and no more than 15 days from the notice of the from the date the notice is issued and pay an advanced deposit in the full amount of the administrative fine or $1,000, whichever is less, or written proof of financial hardship. A responsible party failing to do either or both of the necessary steps to appeal a high severity violation will have waived the right to contest the violation and shall pay the administrative fine as specified in subsection 56.3.1. In this case, the responsible party, Alvarez Family Farms, LLC, was noticed in person on August 2nd, 2023, did not request an appeal in the specified time frame, nor did they pay the necessary deposit. Per the Lake County Code, the right to appeal the high severity violation has been waived, um, and they are uh, due to pay, and they shall pay the administrative fine. Next slide. Oh, additionally, just lastly, before we move on, cultivation without dual licensing is also a violation of their conditions of approval, as well as the Lake County Code, as well as state law. Next slide, please. Alvarez Family Farms LLC has violated the terms of their condition of approval with high severity violations. Chapter 21. Lake County Zoning Ordinance, Section sec, uh, Article, Excellent. no, nope, still this one. Hold on. I'll, I'll tie it all together in a second. Uh, section 60.12 authorizes the Lake County Planning Director, which is old terminology for the Community Development Director, to make a request to the Planning Commission to revoke the major use permit UP 20-03 for high severity violations. And that is my request that will come as a staff recommendation. Next slide, please. I further recommend and request that the Planning Commission find the following persons to be responsible persons for the high severity violations. That would be Freddie Alvarez, CEO, Secretary, CFO, and Director of Alvarez Family Farms, LLC, Ignacio and Idolina Alvarez, property owners, and Ronnie Fa, farm manager, as responsible persons. Next slide, please. And there are the recommendations to order the revocation of major use permit UP 20-03 for Alvarez Family Farms, LLC, located at 12990 Spruce Grove Road, Lower Lake, APN 0120674040 for high severity violations and 
secondly, deem responsible the listed um, people as responsible persons. That concludes my staff presentation, and I welcome any questions you may have. Thank you, Director Turner. Um, do any of the commissioners have any questions or concerns, anything they want to address to staff before we open it up for the public? Yeah. All right, and let's um, go ahead and open public comment. Um, if there's anybody in the Zoom room who would like to speak, uh, now is your chance to raise your hand and we will give you the opportunity. Okay, Joe, we're gonna unmute you and if you could please um, confirm your first and last name, you'll have three minutes. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, this is Joe Rogaway, attorney on behalf of Alvarez Farms. Uh, so there's, there's so much information here that is just so confounding and troubling um, from the perspective of uh, licensees as well as the public writ large. Uh, first, uh, as I noted in the letter, uh, hopefully uh, the commissioners will have a chance to review that letter prior to making a decision. Uh, but the Planning Commission has no legal authority to preside over high severity violations. Uh, so if you were to look at the Ordinance 3112, the appeal process is an appeal process that goes from an initial review, in this case by the CDD director, uh, then directly to the Board of Supervisors. There is no ability for the Planning Commission to even hear this matter. It's what us lawyers call ultra viris, which means outside of legal authority. So first, uh, Alvarez Farms is objecting to this proceeding happening before the Planning Commission because the Planning Commission has no ability to do so. Uh, and this is in the county's own ordinance. And uh, Ms. Turner and County Council have been informed of this. I've, I've written several correspondence to them trying to get them to articulate what their legal justification is for bringing this matter to you, the Planning Commission, uh, and there's no response. Uh, and this has happened in the one other matter, the one other high severity violation matter, and my understand the county has uh, pursued. Uh, and uh, there went up to the Board of Supervisors and it had to be continued that same day because uh, the county had to scramble to figure out how to justify uh, having the hearing uh, come here to the Planning Commission when there's no legal ability to do so. So first, uh, objecting on, on that basis. Second, uh, we have been a part of this appeal process. I've met with Ms. Turner, met with County Council, had subsequent communications with both of them, with all of them. Um, and uh, they uh, are aware of and know that there is an appeal on behalf of Alvarez Farms. This contention raised today that uh, there is no pending appeal is nonsense. Um, I uh, have an email from Ms. Turner uh, that is acknowledging the appeal uh, that uh, she had sent just after um, our meeting together. Uh, and so it's, it's really just not an accurate statement of fact uh, or law for uh, CDD Director Turner to make the claim that there is no appeal pending. Of course, there's an appeal pending. Um, she acknowledged that in correspondence to me. I can provide that to the Planning Commission if they'd like, if you'd like. Uh, additionally, we uh, had done a Public Records Act request. There is no notice of violation issued to Alvarez Farms. It wasn't issued on the day. Mr. Alvarez did not receive a copy. There's no photograph of any posting. I have done a Public Records Act request to the county. The county came back and said that there is no violation for Alvarez Farms. And then we can- Joe, I, I do apologize to um, interrupt you. I, I'm sorry, but your, your three minutes is up if you'd like to um, wrap it up, wrap up your comment. Yes. So, uh, yes. So first, there is no legal authority for this body to hear this matter as a high severity violation. Second, the county has not given, uh, sorry, the planning director has not given the planning commission um, accurate information as to what has and has not occurred. And okay. there's been misleading information. The water, Thank you so much for your comment, violation. Joe. No I, thank you so much for your comment. We have to give everybody else an opportunity to speak. Thank you. Anybody, any other hands in the Zoom room? Yeah. Okay. All right, Betty, we're going to unmute you. Please state your first and last name and you will have three minutes. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Eddie Alvarez and I'd like to yield my time to Mr. Rogway if he wishes to use it. Thank you. 
He's, um, I, okay. Um, whoever is, um, if you are allotting your time to the previous speaker, we can go ahead and uh, do that. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, go ahead. Your three minutes starts. Yes, I appreciate. I appreciate your consideration, and this is an important matter. I want to just uh, focus attention to the fact that a high severity violation is not like a different violation. This is a, a permanent, in some cases, permanent inability to get permitted for cannabis, commercial cannabis activities in the county. It affects someone's livelihood. It's a big deal. And this is being treated, I think, improperly. Uh, we did not get the materials that were provided to, to the Planning Commission. Uh, Ms. Turner did not respond uh, to me. Uh, County Council did not respond to me. We did not receive a copy of the staff report from them. We did not receive a copy of the notice of violation. Mr. Alvarez was not served with a copy of notice of violation. There is um, inaccurate information being conveyed to, to each of you. Uh, for example, uh, those declarations, purported declarations that Ms. Turner uh, was just referencing are unsigned declarations dated in 2022. There's no, there's no legal merit to a declaration that is unsigned. And what would the value be of a declaration that was signed a year prior to the violation at issue? Additionally, the county is claiming that there were violations that were noted in 2022 as a part of incorporation into the violation stemming from a year later in 2023, where we weren't given notice of any violation at all until today. And we didn't even get it. We just got it from downloading uh, what was on the agenda. There, it wasn't provided. We went back and forth with the county. So it's just disingenuous for, uh, for a CDD director to claim uh, that there were um, these uh, declarations coming from the DCC that have some type of merit. They do not. Uh, there's additional issues, for example. Yes, they called it animal welfare, but there was no violation. There's pigs. They raised pigs. They raised pigs for meat. There's no violation. So it's misleading to say that there was a call out to animal control and not finish that with saying, and no violation was found. It's absurd. That would never, ever be acceptable in a courtroom. Additionally, uh, the water board issue, there's no pending violation for the water boards. Again, it is claimed that there is some type of violation with respect to water that should influence the high severity violation. As we sit here today, there's no pending violation. We have confirmation from the water boards. So it's not acceptable for the CDD director to give inaccurate information, false information, misleading information as a way to find a high severity violation before a body that, that the county knows does not have the capacity to hear this matter. If, and if you don't have to take my word for it, look at uh, section 13. The sections that Ms. Turner referenced control the process Nowhere in this ordinance 3112 is there the ability for the planning commission to preside over a high severity violation. And All the right. tone of my voice is emphatic because I have been trying to communicate this with CDD Director Turner, trying to communicate this with Ms. Johnson. They do not respond, even though the Board of Supervisors directed us to meet confer about this issue. And so instead, it's that just being ignored. Concludes. We're not provided the information, and it's just being railroaded. This Joe, I apologize to cut you off again, but that concludes your uh, your three minutes. Madam Chair, if yes. I may, uh, if you'll allow me to address a couple of things that were brought up. Absolutely. Um, so as far as the, piece, the Planning Commission having no authority, the section cited in Chapter 13 of the County Code for Nuisances that deals with high severity violations, um, the Section related to hearings in front of the Board of Supervisors relates to, as um, uh, Director Turner had said earlier, when, uh, when the person who receives notice of the high severity violation requests that hearing and pays the fee or the fine for that hearing to move forward. In this instance, um, staff has said that they did not receive that request from the Alvarez's, so the Board of Supervisors hearing would not be held. The um, challenge to the high severity violation determination was waived, and so that has already been determined. What has brought what has been brought before you today, as far as your authority to hear, is a revocation. And um, in the zoning ordinance, chapter 21, um, revocations are, um, uh, as uh, Director Turner had said, 
brought to the Planning Commission and the Planning Commission has the authority to either revoke uh, a, a permit or if, uh, the, if you feel that there are violations that can be corrected through modification of the permit, then you could also do that. But that is what you are being asked to do today is to determine whether or not this permit should be revoked based on the uh, support of high, high severity violations. Um, you are not being asked to determine whether or not there were high severity violations to some degree because those have been um, uh, determined already. Uh, um, as far as an append, a pending appeal, um, neither uh, my understanding is neither the director nor I have heard that there's a pending appeal related to this particular issue, um, either the high severity violations, um, and of course it's too early to have an appeal on, on the actual revocation, so there wouldn't be one in place for that. Um, and for PRA, um, PRA stands for Public Record Act Requests. Uh, every governmental entity is subject to that particular uh, that particular law. It is not the same as for a court. Um, people, as I'm sure you've, you've experienced in the past, people submit requests to various government entities, their departments, various offices, and there are rules that govern uh, responses to that. Um, it may not be that the, re that the various requests have, have, the responses to the various requests have been completed especially if those requests are for an extended period of time, say for example, over, over a, a course of several years um, for, and for a lot of um, terms. If they're asking for, if whomever is making the request is asking for a lot of information, it may be that they did not receive all of the information uh, yet through the Public Record Act request. Um, the material provided today has been made available today on site um, and to, to your commission and it has also it will also be posted on on uh, the website for review for the public review and so um, if you have any questions related to any of those issues feel free to ask when public comment is over um, I just wanted to make sure we didn't get too far away from from those issues before uh, before I responded thank you um, are there any other hands in the Zoom room? Oh yeah. You can you can limit. Oh, and what was the name? Freddie Alvarez. Uh, Freddie Alvarez. We'll go ahead and um, give you your three minutes. Hello, this is Freddie Alvarez. Yeah, we can hear you. Your three minutes has already started. Oh, I'd like to waive my time and give to Joe Rogway, please. Sure. Joe, your time is uh, running. If you would like to continue with your additional time. Yes, thank you. Uh, and I think it's required because, uh, you know, I'm getting three minutes at a time here to respond uh, to a significant legal issue. And you are uh, getting three minutes provided, because it, excuse I, me, excuse me, Joe. You are getting three minutes because you have decided to take part in public comment on this agenda item where everyone is given three minutes. And I have been more than lenient to allow you to have the additional three minutes by your other parties. So I'm trying to be patient and allow you to speak and hear your side of things as well as run the meeting and give everybody the opportunity. So I will go ahead and restart your three minutes and you're able to continue. I would only observe, Madam Chair, that um, we also are in receipt of a document that we just got this morning and are still in the midst of digesting and that is from Mr. Rogaway's firm. Thank you and, and, and I agree with, with that as well and this is, yeah, multiple pages. So um, Joe, we'll, re we'll go ahead and restart your three minutes. You're welcome to continue. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, please, and thank you for giving me the extra time. And, and please do read the letter that I drafted. There's a lot of law in there. There's a lot of thought in there. And I, I think it's important that the planning commissioners have a chance to, to see that because it's, it's uh, relevant to all of these matters. So first, um, I don't know what Ms. Turner and Ms. Johnson are saying when they say they don't have any record, any appeal. Um, I mean, we have the May 20th, 2024 uh, email that they're both on, uh, you know, Carlos Torres, uh, N um, Nicole Johnson, uh, Maria Turner are all on this email where she's, you know, discussing this appeal. 
So I don't know, and this is after we had a meeting, a structured meeting where we all met together to discuss this violation. So if there was no pending appeal and it was a dead issue, why would they sit with me and, and discuss and negotiate this matter um, and then do a follow-up email about this and other matters that were also high severity violations and never, never raise the issue that there is no uh, pending appeal? Second, I should note that there was never any notice of violation, according to Ms. Turner. There's no violation that was ever provided. Hey, Della. Um, there was hey, no Tongo, tell Della to come here real quick. Excuse me. Excuse me. I believe it's Freddie. Can you please mute yourself? Thank you. So what the information that was provided today for the first time, that is also not in the Public Records Act request, and I, I also... Uh, disagree with the contention of county council. It is complete. That it was the completed public records act request that uh, we received from Ms. Kennard. And then after we received the completed public records act request, the responses to all of that, we confirmed that it was everything, and she confirmed. So again, it's misdirection and it's misleading. Um, moreover, the issue with that uh, county council Johnson just just articulated with respect to. This is the planning commission being asked to to hear a revocation that is about a high severity, a high severity violation, but it it's, doesn't have to go through the high severity violation ordinance is nonsense. I don't know. I don't understand what the logic is of that argument. I think that it is something that the uh, county council is just stuck with because of the posture of this matter. But the the ordinance is clear. There is a process that is articulated, uh, the pro and this is something that we have discussed with county council several times. Uh, I've sent several communications, no response, by the way. This has never been articulated in any response by county council to the multiple communications correspondence that I had sent her, um, because it's it's wrong. It's wrong law, and the thing is, is that the planning commissioners are not composed of lawyers and judges, and county council can say a lot of things, uh, even if it has no legal merit. And the issue is is that when we're talking about, I understand that my time is running low, but the issue is, is that when we're talking about these issues of notice sure. and, and process and due process, these are constitutional issues. They're All right. Due Thank process. you, Joe. That's that concludes your um, other set of three minutes. Is there anybody else with their hand raised to speak? Okay. We're going to unmute you, but you will need to state your first and last name, please. Leanne Nakashima. Good morning, Leanne. We can hear you. I'd like to give my time to Joe Rogaway, please. Okay. Go ahead, Joe. You have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, uh, so just going to the ordinance, um, if you look at section 13-54, uh, um, you can see that there are um, there are mandates as uh, it pertains to notice. So these mandates as it pertains to notice did not happen here. There was no posting of a violation that occurred. For example, there was no notice even issued to the appellant, to Alvarez Farms, the permittee. And it makes no sense to issue a notice of violation to the property owners and not to the permittee who is the basis of the violation. And this is something that, again, was never, ever disclosed by Ms. Turner or Ms. Johnson in the many, many opportunities that we have had for that disclosure to occur. There is all of the photographs that came through the Response to Public Records Act request. There's dozens and dozens of photographs, none of which contain uh, a posting of the notice of violation. And that is a contravention of the law. This, this has to be a process that follows the rule of law. If there's a violation, so be it. Follow the process, let the facts lead to where the facts lead, and then use the ordinance to make the determination. But we can't have a process where the ordinance is entirely disregarded, where the person who has a, a vested entitlement, who has a, a conditional use permit issued by the County of Lake, is not provided the notice that there's a violation, is never provided that information through years years, two years since the initial inspection, nothing. These declarations from the DCC two years ago, never provided. And then when they provide it and we see it today for the first time, they're unsigned. 
but yet they're they're provided to each of you as if there is a force and effect of law. So when we look through all of these things, there's also the other issue before before I forget. There's also this other issue with respect to the state license. The county knew that there was no state license there the entire time. The early activation is issued. I have the early activation in front of me on my computer as I'm speaking to you. Um, the conditions of approval are here. If there's some disorganization in CDD, that would not be a surprise because that is something that has prevailed since the days of early activation, as the Planning Commission well knows. And during the course of the permitting program, since it has been under the regime of Article 27, the early activation program was a, a huge mess. And one of the reasons why it was such a mess is because the county advised applicant after applicant, permitting that, after permitting, that there, they did not that have concludes a your, your three minutes, order. Joe. So last, um, last comment, please. Let me just thank you so comment. much. Thank you. The last comment. Um, sure. And, um, the early activation, just just please. So this issue with respect to the early activation, Ms. Alvarez, Alvarez Farms has paid the county $400,000 in cultivation taxes. $400,000. Walked in cash to the county. Walked it in. The county did these annual inspections, saw the cultivation. They had the opportunity to determine whether or not there was a license there from day one. They, they did not raise an issue with it. Every conversation that happened with the county until this conversation with Ms. Turner right now was, okay, If you, as long as you're in compliance, you're working towards it, and there's a delay at the state level, then it's no problem. Then there was no okay. issue that was raised. Thank you so much. Any other hands raised? And I need to know ahead of time if there's going to be a uh, additional hands that are going to be raised to be tacking on additional time. Okay, no more hands raised. All right. Nobody here in chambers. I appreciate everyone's patience and taking the time to voice their opinion today. I'll go ahead and close public comment. Yes. Um, if it pleases the commission, I do have the uh, email that Mr. Rogaway cited numerous times. Um, on May 20th, I'd be happy, it's short, I'd be happy to read it to the commission for their understanding. Should you like me to do so? Um, I'm, I'm in, I, I'm in agreement to, uh, to hear the email for the record. It's dated May 20th, 2024 to Joe Rogueway, CCing Nicole Johnson, Carlos Torres and Michelle Iris. Dear Mr. Rogaway, thank you very much for meeting with me last week. I appreciate your efforts to advocate on behalf of your client. Revocation requests are not a common occurrence in our department. Oh, I'm sorry, the subject of this email is Legendary Farms Appeal, who Mr. Rogaway also represents. Uh, revocation requests are not a common occurrence in our department and your input gave me much to consider. At this time, I do still intend to like, take the Legendary Farms Appeal to the Board of Supervisors. My main reason is that the Planning Commission has already taken action, which I do not have the authority to disregard or reverse. I can see the value of negotiating a revocation recommendation prior to scheduling the matter with the Planning Commission, and I do appreciate your, eff appreciate your efforts on behalf of the Alvarez permittees. Also, I have an opportunity, oh, this was just going on talking about uh, rescheduling the legendary farms appeal due to a, an emergency management training opportunity. So at our conversation um, with Mr. Rogaway, he was discussing both parties. The appeal was actually the legendary farms appeal. So I'm thinking maybe he's getting a little confused. Um, he also wanted to see what could be done so that the Alvarez revocation recommendation would not come before you. And I told him, given the violations that were clear on site and recorded by our staff, I didn't see how we could do a modification instead of just a revocation recommendation. Again, just to reiterate, the process for filing an appeal of a notice of uh, violation of high severity was actually never done not at the time of the issuance of notice of violation, not after this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Do any of the commissioners have any questions or concerns that they'd like to 
hash out or discuss? I do have a comment, Madam Chair. Um, a lot of what we've heard today is from Mr. Ragaway and, and the people he's representing is procedural. And it was the same with Legendary Farms. We have no authority to hear the matter. There was never a notice of violation served, those kinds of issues. In neither the Legendary case or in this case that we're hearing today, um, is there any acknowledgement of what you put on the screen in terms of the photographs and the apparent obvious violations that those photographs show? So I, I'm not hearing a defense of what was done on the property. I'm just hearing the same procedural argument from Mr. Rogaway, who has represented both Legendary and now the Alvaros family. Thanks. Um, Commissioner Chavez, any, anything to add? Yeah, just uh, <clears throat> I finished reading the the letter that we received from uh, Mr. Rogaway. Um, just seeing how it's uh, mentioned basically on every page that no notice of violation was served. Um, so I have a few questions uh, for the applicant or for Mr. Rogaway uh, when the time comes for sure. that. Sure. Um, I can, since public comment is closed, that's... Um, Fine, if you'd like to ask your questions now and give him an opportunity to respond, um, I'm open to that. Could I make one other comment? Sure. Madam Chair? That is that, um, this is a side note, but uh, that's a lot of pigs for one family to eat. And um, I don't know that there was any, any other intent but to raise pigs for sale. Thank you. Commissioner Chavez, um, go ahead with your uh, questions. Yeah, so these questions are for either Mr. Rogway or uh, Mr. Alvarez. Um, the first question would be, uh, does the Alvarez Farms have a uh, California State Cultivation License? And that could just be answered as a yes or no. Um, and have the conditions of approval been reviewed by your firm, Mr. Rogway? Um, looking at the very first uh, condition of approval, um, that states uh, the use hereby permitted shall substantially confirm to the site plan, project description, and property management plan, uh, and any conditions of approval imposed uh, by the major use permit. Um, so seeing as some of the pictures that we saw today, some evidence from the site visits that were conducted by code enforcement, um, any deviation from, those, from that first condition uh, that would alter the site plans is already in violation of the conditions of approval. Um, there were, we also received some pictures of when that notice was um, received by Mr. Alvarez, and I just wanted to confirm that that is Mr. Alvarez in those pictures receiving that notice of violation. Um, one more thing, on page five of the, um, the letter that we received from Mr. Rogway this morning, um, it has a quote um, on page five. Uh, it says, in revoking a permit, lawfully granted due to the process required that the county act only upon notice of the permittee upon a hearing and upon evidence substantially supporting a finding of revocation and it cited uh, city of san marino versus roman catholic our bishop so basically every part of that um for a permit that's lawfully granted it was lawfully granted but it, uh, it wasn't following the conditions of approval so i just uh, there's a few things in there that um you know i just want to clear up and if you could answer a few of those questions um, to clarify uh, some of this uh, information that we received in this letter. Thank you. Um, and before I give you the opportunity to respond, Joe, I'm going to check in with our Commissioner Zoller to make sure she doesn't have any questions or concerns at this time. Okay. Um, Joe, I will go ahead and give you an opportunity to go to respond to Commissioner Chavez's um, questions, please. Uh, yes, certainly. Uh, so uh, happy to respond to your questions. Uh, where, where would you like uh, my first response? Which, uh, which question would you prefer? The first question I believe you had was in regards to the state license, correct? Yes. Yes, okay. So uh, my understanding is that there is not currently a license that is issued by the DCC for that, that site. However, there is no, under the high severity violation ordinance 3112, it is not a basis for it to be a high severity violation for a state license to not have issued. 
High okay. severity violations relate to permits. I just wanted a yes or no um, on that question. Um, we can review the high severities and what that is defined as later on. I just wanted to kind of get those yes or no uh, answers from for the questions that I stated earlier. Um, would you like me to repeat the next question, sir? Yes, yes. Uh, have the conditions of approved been reviewed by your firm, uh, Mr. Roway? Yes. Uh, did Mr. Alvarez receive that notice of violation? No. Um, not him in the picture. Can we show that picture? Can I hold it up? Is there a way that we can like share the screen? I don't know if this is the... Uh... Yeah, I, I, I'm familiar with that picture. That's not Mr. Alvarez. Is it the farm manager? I actually, I don't know. I've never seen that person before. There's some driver's licenses that are there. Um, but that's not Mr. Alvarez. And there was no proof of service. There was no posting. Mr. Alvarez is here and he can confirm that he has not received that notice of violation. And then what, just one thing, just very briefly, there's other emails with Ms. Turner going back to March 1st, to the property manager? just about Alvarez Farms. So I just want to clarify that. It's very specific. Uh, there is responses back. One of the, the commenters who gave me their time, uh, Ms. Nakashima, had uh, started the appeals process and was in communication with Ms. Turner and looped me in when I was engaged in this matter on March 1st. And there's a series of correspondence through uh, the beginning of March uh, all the way through March 8th, where we're talking about the calendaring of the appeal for this matter on behalf of Alvarez Farms. It's just disingenuous to now claim that there was no appeal filed. It's, it's just really um, disappointing uh, and, you know, as a member of the, the public, it's just sad. Okay. And so the farm manager, um, I believe is who is on this picture, did he, uh, it looks like he's holding the notice on his hand, uh, the paper. Did he run that down uh, to, or up the chain of command to alert Mr. Alvarez or the property owners of that notice of violation? My understanding is that was never received by Mr. Alvarez. I, I don't, I've never seen or spoken with the individual in that picture, so I can't speak to that. Uh, my understanding is that Mr. Alvarez has never received a notice of violation. I know my office has never received it. The county had no record of it as of yesterday evening. And this was confirmed by Ms. Kennard. So I don't know what happened, but I do know that there was not compliance with the ordinance and notice, lawful notice was not provided. If what happened was that Mr. Mm -hmm. Ma never conveyed that information to Mr. Alvarez, that's an internal failure. It's not a failure of the department. I, well, I, I disagree with that contention actually. So I don't know if that individual is authorized to accept anything on behalf of any entity. The county knew who was uh, the responsible party uh, for this this application and for the use permit. Remember, the use permit's issued. I mean, this. I mean, you're here because the use permit's issued. They, they went through an extensive process through the granting of early activation, through the issuance of uh, the the use permit. Um, and uh, Mr. Freddy Alvarez was there the the entire time as a point of contact with the county. Um, and so the county uh, never gave Mr. Mm. Alvarez the notice of violation, never posted it as is required uh, through the ordinance uh, there, and um, only has just now, and didn't respond to my emails, even from last night, requesting this information. It just, they, there's nothing there. So we have, as of yesterday evening, Ms. Kennard saying there is no notice of violation in the file. My follow-up to Ms. Johnson and Ms. Turner re like requesting this information and then nothing until the presentation this morning. So uh, I do not stipulate as to the authenticity of any of that document, as to the reliability of it, as to the veracity of the document proponent. Um, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have as to that, but I think okay. that making assumptions and conclusions does not benefit the process. Thank you so much for the response. Madam Chair. Yes. On the 2023 site visit, we have pictures of driver's licenses for both Freddie Alvarez and Ronnie Fra Ronnie Fa. They were both present during that site visit. Uh, Mr. Alvarez may not have been in that photograph, but I can't imagine that the farm manager would choose not to convey official documents that he has pictured discussing with our code enforcement officer to the permittee. 
Uh, also, additionally, we have received seven significant public record act requests from Mr. Rogaway in the last two months. We have done our very best to complete them as completely and as in timely a manner as possible. If in fact something was missing, I am happy to go back to stat mm -hmm. with staff to work through it. The requests have been confusing and overlapping. Um, and so it's kind of taken like we have to draw Venn diagrams to really understand to be able to properly fulfill the request, but we continually do so to the best of our ability. Thank you. Thank you, Director Turner. Um, that being said, um, and remembering why we are here today is the um, the revocation of the permit and um, what staff has brought forward to us is what we need to base our decision on. And um, there are, with the photos in the multiple um, items noted on the staff report, the violations I feel um, are definitely in um, Madam Chair. Yes. <laughs> if I could, if I could um, provide some guidance to the, the commission on what the ordinance states as far as revocations and the grounds for revocations. Sure. Um, so chapter 21, article 60, in article 60.10, uh, um, section 60.11 actually gives the grounds for permit revocation. There are three uh, that such permit was obtained by fraud that one or more of the terms or conditions upon which such permit was granted has been violated, and that the use for which the permit was granted is so conducted as to be detrimental to the public health, safety, or welfare, or as to be a nuisance. The high severity violations would, those, those violations that fall in the category of high severity violations, and it may not be all of them that, you, that you've been presented with today, but those that do are within the nuisance section, um, chapter 13 of the ordinance. So those would be defined as nuisances, but not necessarily all of the violations presented to you today would be. Okay. That's helpful. Thank you, Nicole. Um, that kind of gives us a more broad um, explanation as far as um, the violations that were that has hap that have happened on this property, um, and we should be um, using this opportunity to you know we do, we do everything case by case, but if um, this is something that I feel does um, does does constitute for the. Uh, revocation of the use permit. That's how I feel. Any other concerns or conversation? May I ask if there was what the result of the appeal that the board heard on legendary? Was that what was the resolution there? That's Tuesday. It was continued. Um, they did hear a, a little bit of public input. It was continued to the 27th. Tuesday. Tuesday. And the reason for that? The, um, some of, those, uh, some of the, the attorneys representing parties were unable to attend, I think, was part of, part of the reason. We're prepared to present our staff report during that date. The board uh, wanted to make sure that it wasn't continued to the requested October date um, because they'd really like to get this appeal done um, prior to harvest since it affects the permittees. Mm -hmm. For me, Madam Chair, this falls into the same category as legendary and in terms of what we've heard from Mr. Rogaway's firm in both cases and in terms of what we saw with our own eyes in terms of the staff report and presentations. And um, as you say, um, we take each case, each application, each issue as on a case-by-case -case basis. We only operate within the four corners of what's in front of us. And based on, on what's been in front of me today, I'm also prepared to proceed. Um, Commissioner Chavez? Uh, were your concerns and um, your questions <clears throat> answered? Did you did you get the information that you needed to feel one way or the other? Uh, yes, um, I think everything that we received today um, from everyone, uh, I think uh, 
just clarified, because uh, when we first read through these uh, applications, it's a, uh, you know, you might come in here thinking like a certain type of way, but you end up hearing both sides of the story. So I think I got a pretty collective understanding of the situation with this uh, application. Okay, I think we're all, is there a motion? I just realized I didn't put in the draft motions for you. Okay. Um, so are we? It would closely follow the recommendations, just starting with A, I move to, <laughs> and then to read the rest of it. Okay. Go for it. I move that the Planning Commission revoke major use permit UP 20-03 for cannabis cultivation by Alvarez Family Farms LLC, located at 12990 Spruce Grove Road, Lower Lake, APN 012-067-40, for high severity violations as described in the staff report dated August 22, 2024. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I move that the Planning Commission deem Freddie Alvarez listed as with the California Secretary of State as CEO, Secretary, CFO, and Director of Alvarez Family Farms, LLC, Ignacio and Idolina Alvarez, property owners, and Ronnie Fa, farm manager, as responsible persons for the high severity violations attributed to Alvarez Family Farm, LLC's major use permit, UP 20-03, located at 12990 Spruce Grove Road, Lower Lake, APN 012-067-40, as described in the staff report dated August 22, 2024. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Um, let me read my note. Um, one is, second. Is the notice for appeal to set a 10 or 15 one? day one rather than seven? Christina doesn't have the language. Right? Is it a seven day calendar appeal period or 15? Seven? Okay. Uh, let me just read my note. Please note that the applicant or any interested person is reminded that the zoning ordinance provides for a seven calendar day appeal period. If there is a disagreement with the planning commission, an appeal to the Board of Supervisors may be filed. The appropriate forms and applicable fee must be submitted prior to 5 p.m. on or before the seventh calendar day following the commission's final determination. Thank you for your time today. Um, staff and everyone participating online and in chambers. We will move on to our non-timed items and department updates. Thank you, Maria Turner, Director of Community Development. I have two updates for you. One is uh, we have received two acceptances of our offers for employment. One for our community development technician who sits at the front counter for planning and one for a new resource planner. So we are very excited to add this, these new high achievers to our team because we have a lot of work to do. Second update is for our Lake County 2050 project. This again is our general plan update, uh, including all eight local area plan updates. The, this month is the month that we are distributing and collecting the second community survey. The second community survey people will note is much bigger than the first community survey because the purpose of the first one uh, a couple months ago was to sort of glean what the key issues were in each planning area of which Lake County has eight planning areas. The second community survey is to sort of get a little more granular and get more detail about the key issues that arose from the first surveys. And because they are now specific to each local area plan, instead of one survey fits all, we now have individual surveys, so eight separate surveys specific to each planning area. Any interested persons, even if you're only somewhat interested, you can access our survey both in English and Spanish to take either online or print out a PDF copy at www.lakecounty2050.org. 
This website, lakecounty2050.org, is the hub for the general plan update project. This is a three-year project started at the end of last year and hopefully will conclude in 2026. So we're very excited. Additionally, in September, we will start having local area plan advisory committee meetings. Those are our late packs, the eight different um, advisory committees the board established and appointed folks to um, to focus on review, gaining consensus on different issues covered in uh, local area plans. Those meetings will take place starting in September and run through the end of October. Um, so they're going to have plenty to do. Uh, and at that time, we will turn the recommendations over both to the GPAC and to core staff so that we can start drafting our local area plans, which will be out then, I think, December or January, at which point the lay packs will come back together and as well as the GPAC to start reviewing actual documents. Um, and we will have them also available for the public. It's exciting stuff. May I ask a question about an unfortunate incident that you may or may not be able to comment on? Absolutely. And that is the um, recent arrest of an employee of the CDD? We received complaint. I received complaints regarding an employee. I took these complaints directly to the sheriff's office. They launched an investigation which resulted in the arrest of one of our code enforcement officers. I believe their investigation is still ongoing. Um, and so we are continuing to work with them as additional information comes to our department. Thanks. Thank you. I would like to reiterate that we did not think twice about taking this to the sheriff's office. Our team values the public trust that has been instilled. It's the only way we can actually operate and do what we do. And so we will never hesitate to report any information. We have a zero tolerance for anything like that because we have to be able to, to trust our employees, our team members out in the field mm -hmm. to be conducting themselves in a manner that is appropriate for a county official. We have worked on, we are currently working on a, a policy now uh, for body cameras that the board has said would, they would like to see as soon as possible. This is to assist us in the future for the protection of our staff when complaints come in um, that could be that could lack merit as well as have a record of every interaction out in the field that we have with the public. Yeah. So we are determined to make whatever improvements we can within our department to assure that this does not happen in the future. But if it does, we will handle it the exact same way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Director Turner, and uh, we appreciate your, your leadership for sure. Um, and again, welcome, uh, Commissioner Zoller. We appreciate you, like I said, taking the time and con uh, contributing to your community, taking uh, that vacant seat. So welcome aboard. Um, I don't see anything else um, to discuss today. Um, we will go ahead and adjourn this meeting at 11 o'clock. Is it a